Hey everybody, so today we're going to talk about the future of movies being shown, right? I'm Josh Gibbs from Fourth Wall Players. And I'm Kelly McKinney of Hollow Productions. All right, so this is article uh, that was released uh, today. Local article. Local article today, May 14th. Uh, Indianapolis, uh, which is where Kelly where and I are, are yeah. living. We're not from here, but we're, right. we're here now at we're this right. point in time. So Indianapolis is a drive-in theater uh, that apparently Amazon is releasing. It's Amazon, right? Yeah. Yeah. Amazon is. <laughs> should have should have clarified that first. Amazon is releasing a sci-fi thriller movie um, that it has the rights to. It's releasing it on the big screen, as opposed uh, it's before it releases it on uh, digital on streaming service. So. I think that's kind of a cool. It, and actually, I think it says it's going to coincide with the release. Right? Oh, it's at the same time. Yeah, yeah. I thought yeah. it's uh, okay. So they're 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 using a um, a live event mm -hmm. to to basically release a, a streaming movie. It's really right. cool. And so I guess part of the reason why is this since it's a sci-fi thriller. Yeah. And it's set in the 1950s. It's not it's not a Hollywood release. Mm -hmm. And. Um, so, don't so have to worry about paying the actors and yeah, and yeah. it's and it's because it's a nostalgic way to see a film set in the 1950s. I think this is a great idea. Right, I like the way they they settled the payment for it. The drive-in theater and Amazon. Amazon's just asking them for fifty cents a ticket. Yeah, and yes. so the drive-in theater doesn't have to charge you twenty-five dollars to sit there and and watch a um, indie film. Basically, I think that's great. I think people will like to see that. Um, that that being said, I mean, it does kind of bring to bring to mind the idea of what is the future of movie theaters? I mean, now that we've seen that it's entirely possible for networks to make money off of going straight to streaming, um, you know, how how are movie theaters going to survive? I I personally think a great way for them to combat going completely out of business would be instead of relying on brand new releases. Um, which you're not going to want to go there and sit with 8,000 other people in a movie theater to watch something new, unless it's very specific, very special. Uh, I think they should just show, movie theaters should start um, investing in showing like older things that people remember fondly, like classic movies. Right. I think yeah, that'd yeah. be really cool. Things that are a little bit harder to find on Netflix and right. things like that. Yeah, and as well as like, um, you know, to be showing things in an older fashion mm -hmm. as well. Like, you know, it's like, oh, the showcase yeah we're you know i wonder if they can be like you know, where you're showing films that were shot in you know that are in you know 72 millimeter or whatever you know what i mean the the film style you know it's like where it's actual an old film reel or whatever i used but, to love really i i i worked at the movie theater for my first job and and we actually still had like the film reels um up until the time i well i, I doubt any movie theater does anymore but at the time so a lot of movie theaters still did because it hadn't all gone completely digital yet um, I'm aging myself a little bit, but I I really liked the process of like threading the the film through everything and like clicking stuff to get. I don't know. It reminded me of, like one of those '80s movies that had like some like obscenely difficult process for like to make toast. You know, like <laughs> it reminded me of that. Like, why are we going through all these steps to have this reel go like this? Basically, so I thought yeah. that was cool. And like, I just instantly think of uh, the Last Action Hero. Yeah, you know what I mean, and that the old man, you know, that worked yeah. reels, and it's like it was just a cool uh, thing. It Fight was Club cool was thing. BS about that, by the way, about the whole like putting that doesn't happen. What cigarette burns? Oh, the, the, no, what the, they call the cigarette burns. No, 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 those are those are real, but the whole like putting in two two frames or whatever to just kind of pop that that no that wouldn't work like that. Just so you know. Right. Well, and then not only that, but wouldn't you be throwing off the audio? Yeah. You'd be throwing off the right. audio. Yeah. You throw, you throw off the audio and it a movies go... A fast movie, at least by the time I was working there, was four frames a second. So, I mean, two frames is half a second. So that pop on and off, that wouldn't... It would have been less than that. So, anyway, it doesn't matter. Right. <laughs> wow. That's completely a side segue. Yeah. But, so, so yeah, but it's pretty cool that, you know, just locally here... They're using a drive-in to release an Amazon streaming movie, right? Um, and at such a, a cheap rate, you know, with with drive-ins, and so that's that's another thing. It's like, I guess, in my mind, with the whole drive-in business model, where do they save all the money? Because they, they're still screening the movie, right? And in, in my they're, mind, they're that's not most they're not giving all their ticket money most. to Hollywood. Okay. 
and they're still making concession money as well, and they probably will charge less for the concessions because they don't have to. Right, you know what I'm saying? I'm not, I'm not talking about Amazon, I'm talking about the yeah. drive-in itself. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not talking about from this one, but from the regular. Oh, in business. general? Yeah, just in general. You know, I don't when, know. When Amazon isn't just giving. Probably because money. they don't have as expensive, I mean, they don't have to have like plumbing necessarily, or there's, there's a lot of overhead they don't have to worry about. You just have a couple people working a concession stand and a guy that's, you know, turning on the projector or whatever. Might even be one of the people in the concession stand. So you don't have a lot of overhead because the only thing you have to worry about electric wise is that stand and the and the projector. And they, they probably have outhouses or some sort of bathroom Lights facilities. And, yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. but uh, it's it's not the same as like being in you know, twelve air conditioned giant rooms filled with eight thousand bodies, you know. Right. So basically all that sort of stuff the, the customer are paying for for themselves because they're in their cars and they're using the air conditioner from that and all that other stuff. But um, I mean, it, I'm, I'm sure if you really looked at the figures, you'd, you'd see a lot of things that you don't have to worry about at an outside venue that you would at an inside one. Right. So. It's very interesting. Cleaning's probably easier too. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so how, how do you think um, uh, the <laughs> film world and how we show the, the theater going experience is going to change or is it i mean i know it's a t it's a timeless debate it's been going on now ever since digital time came after out. time ever since digital well before streaming people were talking about are people still going to go to the theater theaters for digital um yeah so i like it for the experience but the thing is should, other than I'm mcu just, movies which that might not even be a thing anymore right because of the the the, the ending of the thanos storyline and everything but other than that like in like Harry Potter years ago, I can't think of anything that I've gone to in the last 15 years that I was excited about going to like an opening night preview. Right, no, you yeah, know? The, the last, bef before the MCU. Yeah. Okay, before the MCU, the only two movies I can think about that I was ever really excited to go to see mm -hmm. in theaters in my teen years. Yeah. Were, um, I mean, besides Lord of the Rings. Uh, of course. But besides that was Butterfly Effect. Okay. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I would have cared too much. I mean, <laughs> I loved drama films even back then. And uh, Talladega Nights, The Ballad of Ricky Bobby. Wow. I remember seeing the X. I remember seeing X three at the premiere. That kind of ruined my love for premieres. No, I'm just kidding. Because that made that movie a lot better. Because having an audience of like devoted fans sitting in there being excited to see it for the first time right. like changes that makes it so, it changes yeah. it changes your perception of it right. so it's like when the juggernaut first came on screen and i know he eventually said it later in the movie but we didn't know that me and a bunch of my friends were like i'm the juggernaut bitch and at the time that was funny nowadays people are like what the hell are you talking about but right. but it was so funny that the movie makers put it in later in the movie of course we didn't know it at the time but you know, and it was a lot lamer than ours was. But, um, yeah, just little things like that that's really cool about going to see a pre uh, premiere. It's kind of like it's kind of like the debate over, do you want to go watch live concerts or do you want to just wait for it to come out on, I guess now it would be digital download or whatever, and you just right, listen to it. In the, it yeah, yeah, you listen to it in the comfort of your home. Um, I In that regard, I'm more of like, I'd rather just listen to stuff at home. Like, I do not like concerts. I, my, I cannot take the loud the bass thumping and all that stuff I my mind can't handle that um but as far as it comes like and I'm I'm kind of a theater nerd I don't know if you guys knew that about me but it, it kind of comes down to for me I love I love being there in the moment and seeing something you know while it's fresh and before it's been like like we've discussed in other videos before everybody else has put their two cents into it and Right. So, in, in that sense, I think movie theaters are great, and you can't really experience that as well in, like, a drive-in setting, because you, there is still barriers. You're not, like, one audience. You're a bunch of miniature audiences. Um, so, I don't know. That's my thing. Yeah, it, you know, and see, it's like, this is the thing. This is, I guess this, is, to me, is also the really, the really big, important question about this, though, is the theater-going experience going to matter for the future of film right and it just and, it just depends on where the where the market is i mean I'd, I'd say no i mean because i i think about the reason i haven't been excited to go see something in theaters is because the things that i usually get excited about nowadays aren't releasing in theaters other than mcu movies it's right that's stuff really on it. netflix it's you know what i mean like 
you know, um, when... Uh, well, and it really comes back and, you know, this is definitely not a hot take, but it comes back to the idea that there's nothing original anymore. Like, everything yeah. is a remake or a comic book movie. Right. Well, and, and I see, love the MCU, but... And, well, and this is another thing, though. Inter like, uh, the things that we're e excited to see on Netflix, those... All of none of those are original ideas either. No, they but they're are. being expressed in the first time in an episodic manner, right, rather I, than in just a single two-hour. And I, I think that's the funny thing is that for years people just people I don't know whoever they are yeah, just assumed are. just assumed that our attention spans are getting shorter and shorter and shorter. And there's even like science out there that says that it's shorter now than it was like 50 years ago. But we as we as consumers much prefer watching a longer episodic television show right over watching a two-hour movie where they where they don't have as much story because you have to sacrifice story yep yes, right yeah you do i for one it's and it's been 10 years so i think it's warranted well almost 10 years we'll be in next year um they need to make a harry potter television series so, so play more in the comments <laughs> sideways whatever whichever way you want to go and let us know about the future of film this has been the endless rant about the future of film on what it is and thank you all thanks comment, for listening to my ted talk <laughs> thank you for being present for our ted talk what no yes yes thanks for coming no uh, yeah go ahead and like and subscribe on our channel uh, if you want some bonus features that aren't like this, go ahead and subscribe to our Patreon. Um, oh, yeah. And did I mention that we have a movie out called The Here and Now on Amazon Prime? Yeah, get out! Go!